Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Z Integrator in the five minute pool on ICC. Let's give him a scanny and see what he's got. Plays knight f3. I like bishop g4 in this position. Usually they play uh, bishop e2 and then play for d4. I'll just play knight f6. Knight c6 is a much sharper line that black can opt for. This line is considered a little bit passive, but in my experience, black gets plenty playable positions to work with. Yeah, white is able to establish this pawn duo d4, c4. I played this line OTB as well, and it's worked out okay. They can go attack this pawn, you play queen c8, and black plans to castle, play knight bd7, play a6, and then eventually go for c5, and try to start fighting back against white center a little bit. So let's go knight bd7 here. Typically white will play knight e5 somewhere down the line. Don't know if they'll play that yet. I could play c5 right now, but I think it's helpful to control that b5 square, so I'll play a6 to preface this. And let's see what they do. Yep, they do play knight e5. So now probably take and then play knight d7, which will attack that pawn on e5. They might go f4, so I have to bear in mind that they can try to pawn storm me like this. So knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, knight d7, f4. Hmm, I have options there. Maybe bishop c5? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll play it this way. There's also a knight c5 right here. Knight c5... They'd have to play queen a3? Somehow that looks very suspicious for them. But I don't see any way I can punish that. Let's go bishop c5 instead. Note that rook takes d7, removing the defender does not work, because I have bishop takes e3 check in between move. Okay, so they're going to try to divert uh, my attention a little bit, and if I take on e3, they take with a queen. I do have bishop c2 here, which I'm kind of leaning towards. Deflecting the queen. Ah, no, actually, I can take e3 and then play bishop c2. That one's material, doesn't it? Yeah, because I'd be forking the rook and the knight. I think that's the correct move order. Let's do that. Check. Let's see what he has in mind against this. But I think he's just going to have to give up the exchange from the looks of it. Yep, undefended knight. Little fork going on. Okay, so let's take here. Plays knight c5. So you might go after this pawn. If I play queen here, bishop f3, queen b6, that looks pretty good. Let's do that. I'm consciously trying to play a little bit quicker. You might have noticed that I kind of breezed through the opening there. Time management is just crucial in blitz especially when you're playing good players who are going to pressure you on the clock. And personally, I know the opening is one area where I might spend more time than I probably should. Because you think like, oh, you know, I've got five whole minutes to play this game. Why not just take my time? But uh, it could be a leak in your game, in your blitz game, spending more time than you need. So this queen is still undefended. They are threatening my bishop. I think he bishop b1 could be good. I could take b2, but somehow that doesn't look quite right yet. Let's just go bishop b1. f5, wow. So they're just going to barrel ahead over here. Can I just take that? Just take that guy. So if he takes back, I take with my bishop. Bishop takes b7. I could even play rook b8 then, because if rook takes f5, I have rook takes b7, and he's still pinned. Yeah, so I am not going to be fooled by you, Z Integrator. Yeah, let's do this. So if Rook takes f5, I take here, and like I said, he's still pinned. This knight cannot move for fear of losing his queen. He does take. Okay. e6. Huh. Clever. Probably I can drop my rook back against that one. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do this. Try to get our rooks coordinated. He can take f7 with check. I might just ignore it and play king h8. Then I have queen g6 ideas. That looks promising. If e7, I'll just play rook f8. So that also looks good. Doing all right on the clock, plenty of time left. We've simplified the position significantly. Hmm. 
Hmm, he does play e7. So if I check here first, there's rook g5. So I'm thinking this is the way to go. Rook f8, yeah, let's do that. He's going to play rook e5. He kind of has to. I don't see any other good moves. Maybe just queen takes b2 then. Hmm, okay, he wants to defend that. So can I win this pawn somehow? Like f6 maybe? Or check first? Rook g5. Check b1. I can certainly go win a lot of stuff. f6 looks direct. It weakens my king a little bit though. That's my only concern about that move. I think I see a decent way of proceeding. Queen d6, rook e5, queen check, and then lift the rook to g6. That looks sensible. Let's do that. So he's he's got to play this. And now, do I check first or do I play rook b6? Draw. Not sure it matters. He offers a draw. Yeah, not going to take check. a draw. Mm, maybe I should have lifted the rook first. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Wow, queen trade proposition. Wasn't expecting that. All right, well, let's just take. And then we're going to come here. So my plan now is to go like f6 and king f7. I think it's just helpful to defend this pawn. On knight d7, I can always play rook to d6, I believe. So I don't think that's a concern. Time is a concern. Okay, let's do this. Just stop a5. I don't see the, the point in rushing here. Yeah, what does he do? Because I have a pretty straightforward plan in mind. He's going to play that way. Can I just take it with my rook? Yeah, I don't see why not. Let's do that. Knight d7, still f6. I think he's running out of ammunition. He could try rook d1, hoping for rook takes e7, the double question mark move, but yeah, rook d1, I just have the simple f6, king f7. So I think this is curtains for white. On knight a6, forking my rook and my pawn, I just play rook takes c4. Nothing doing there for white. Under a minute, but plenty winning, so. Could you play knight d3, rook takes c4, knight e5? Idea rook takes e7, rook d1. Knight d3, rook takes, okay, not worth thinking about. Let's just come here as planned. F5 was also probably pretty good. Just guard that. Okay, so let's come there, attack the knight. Now we eliminate this dangerous pawn. Coordinate our rooks. Let's get this out. I can't threaten to take it yet because he does have knight d8. But let's just bring our king up a little bit. First, let's play h5. We'll do this. Okay, I'm willing to let my king get a little open. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, let's just do that. I'm up three pawns in this endgame, so that should Check. be pretty easily winning. Check. Advance Check. this guy. Come after that pawn. Oop, didn't have to do that. Check. Check. Let's check here. Take that. Check. Check. He's going to play it out. Evidently. If he checks, I have king g3, though. Yeah, he just resigned. All right, so we take down the z integrator. I wonder who this player is. I definitely played them before. They're pretty tough. As you can see, they have a rating close to 2,500. 
anonymous GM. So I think this one was uh, very much just an oversight by White. When they played knight a4, they missed the strength of this bishop c2 idea. So attacking the undefended knight, hitting the rook on d1. If I didn't have bishop c2, White might have something here because f5 is a threat. But let's go back and have a look at it. So knight f3 on move 3. This is a very valid way of playing against the Scandinavian. I'm surprised it's not more popular, actually. Most people just play knight c3. I'd wager in, you know, 80 to 90% of my games I get knight c3 here, but knight f3 is perfectly fine. The difference between knight c3 and knight f3 is that with knight f3, right, white retains the option of pushing the pawn to c4 and then bringing the knight in behind it. So they can try to establish a pawn duo d4, c4, rather than just simply the d4 pawn, because in the knight c3 lines, even though white wins a tempo, they pay a price in being unable to play c4 after that. So there is something to be said for getting the pawn duo out there. So bishop g4, bishop e2. Now, uh, one of the popular ways of playing this for black, which I've employed on many occasions, is knight c6, and then castling queenside. White will play d4 here, which looks like it might blunder a pawn at first because of bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes d4. But you must know that this move is terrible because check. a bishop takes c6 check, and white will win the black queen. They've just removed the defender. Consequently, after d4, black usually castles queen side, and black has placed full priority on developing the queen side and is applying maximum pressure to d4, but they've neglected their king side development. Uh, and these positions get very interesting, especially if white plays c4 now and plays aggressively trying to kick this queen away. So this is an entirely different complex. I just played it a little more simply, developing my king side. This does allow white to play d4, c4. I will concede that white is probably slightly better here, but this is a position I'm comfortable with. I know I can play it pretty fast. Um, last week I played a match against Grandmaster Old Love, and we got some positions like this, and you know I'm willing to concede this space advantage in exchange for getting a position I'm familiar with and having a solid setup to work with. I don't think that's a bad strategy, especially in Blitz. So h3, I drop the bishop back, queen b3 attacking the pawn, so you go here. It'd be a little worse to play b6. I don't really want to make a queenside weakness. Also, b6 is not consistent with what I want to do. And I mentioned I want to play pawn a6 and then pawn c5. So queen c8 more fits the bill. Also, I'm hoping to bring a rook to d8, probably after castling and bear down on that d4 pawn. So knight c3 castles, bishop e3. This is all pretty normal. I played a6, just controlling the b5 square. I think that's useful. And now white started playing aggressively with g4. They could also play something like rook fe1. I'm actually not sure this rook placement is ideal for white. It might be the case that they should play rook fd1 and then put this rook on c1 where it opposes my queen on c8. I think lining up the rooks behind the two pawns makes a little more sense than playing rook ad1. It's unclear to me what this rook will be doing. This is not something that might show up on a computer evaluation, but it's worth considering. I mean, these, these pawns are pawns that white's already pushed and Clearly, white would like to expand on their central play in the future, and I think aligning them on the D and C files would be the way to go. So rook ad1, I played a6, g4, and yeah, now it got kind of a little sharper, knight e5, and I took. So I really like black's pawn structure in these positions. I kind of feel like the stakes are um, a little higher for white because, yes, they do have more space. They have these pawns that are far flung, but you really got to watch yourself as white. I mean, black doesn't have many weaknesses. Black is ceding you territory in exchange for having a compact position and maybe being able to play against these weaknesses. Let's just see what the engine thinks about this position right here. Yeah, the engine likes white. Actually, clearly likes white. I played bishop c5. I thought about knight c5, trying to attack the queen, because it's important that the queen doesn't have this flight square, but I couldn't figure out what to do after queen a3, which steps into a discovery, but what am I going to do with this knight? If the knight moves anywhere, my bishop hangs. Also, uh, white is threatening bishop takes c5. Maybe I could play b6 here, but something about this didn't look right. So hence I settled on bishop c5. And note that I'm threatening to take the bishop with check, so rook takes d7 would fail check. to just this, followed by taking the rook. So white played knight a4, and yep, that's a clear blunder. Better would be to take, 
and then just move the queen, queen a3, yep, attack the knight. I don't know what I would have played here. Maybe knight e4? Yeah, knight e4 seems reasonable. Note that now that there's no uh, piece on d7, my queen is helping to defend against the threat of f5. Otherwise, f5 would trap my bishop. But if they play it now, take, take, bishop takes, and maybe that's not even the most accurate move order. Engine says I should insert this capture to threaten this. Let's go with that. And now take f5, and yeah, the queen does a good job helping to defend the bishop. But yeah, absolutely white should take here and then play queen a3, I think, and maybe they have an advantage. I mean, the space that they have is not for nothing. It's not uh, completely one-way traffic. Objectively, black is probably worse here. But it's a position. Yeah, I'd probably try to play rook d8 and maybe induce some exchanges down the file, try to relieve the cramping in my position, all the time being wary of f5. But yep, white just blundered with knight a4, Check. take, take, and now bishop c2, and I win material thanks to the double attack. White decided to take, and I think I managed the rest of the game pretty well. I didn't, like, overthink it. That's one thing I've been working on, trying to play more simply in winning positions rather than needlessly complicating your task. Queen b6. They played rook f2. Yeah, I thought if bishop takes b7, I could just move my rook somewhere, uh, like rook b8. Rook a d8 is also good. It's always going to cost white time to get out of this pin situation. And like, say they take here, I bet I have ideas with like rook d3, for instance, and the knight cannot take. I'm attacking the queen, maybe the pawn on h3 behind it. b2 is also, also hanging. I can go take that if I want. So white played rook f2, hitting my bishop. I just played bishop b1. Could maybe grab b2, but I didn't want to step into a pin. So... Bishop b1, they played f5. That move seems kind of reckless. I just grab the pawn, and after bishop takes b7, I have this. And as you saw, rook takes, rook takes here. I'm still using the pin. So now material-wise, I'm just up a uh, exchange plus a pawn. No, just an exchange, sorry. Just two points of material. They played e6. Mildly tricky move. Because if I take, then I lose immediately Check. thanks to this Check. idea fork on the king and the queen. So e6 was not a bad shot by white, but I think rook bb8 is a good rejoinder, good response to e6, and now I've got my back rank covered. If white took Check. here, maybe I could just take it. I was actually just thinking about king h8, though, keeping my king safe, and I don't think I'm too worried about this pawn. I can always threaten queen here and try to get it back. Queen e4 is decent for white, but still you see a pretty sizable advantage. But also simply rook takes f7, looks like it's winning too. Take, take. Yeah, and here black doesn't have any forks they can, or uh, white doesn't have any forks they can lure me into. Note that queen e6, I just take the queen. So they tried e7, I went here, now b3. Yep, looks like I came up with a good way of consolidating. I spent a while on this move. I really wanted to make make sure I got this move right. Check. Then I gave a check. I speculated maybe rook b6 would be better, but I think check. checking turned out all right. And queen e1 really surprised me. I thought they were going to play king h2, whereupon I was planning on doing this and try to swing the rook over. Maybe that's not best. Rook d5? Ooh, yeah, rook d5 is a good move. Threatening the queen and also threatening this. Hmm. That might be another reason why the immediate rook b6 is better. Because now on rook d5, at least I check. can check this way. Yeah, and it's more complicated. King h2, rook d6. Okay, and then time to block rook d8. Because if I can win this e7 pawn, the game is effectively over. So I just have to make sure that uh, I either win this pawn, or as I try to do, Check. like gain counterplay Check. against their king, which kind of indirectly uh, allowed me to win this pawn. I think white played king e or queen to e1 because they kind of uh, saw that I might have play with this move. Although maybe white just felt that Check. their pawn on e7 and their active knight would create problems, but it just looks like if black is careful here, white's just going to lose. Rook b6 guarding a6, and you know, I have this simple plan of pushing the f-pawn and moving the king up and gobbling e7, and I don't see what they do about it. 
Yeah, they could try rook d1, hoping for Check. this miracle, as I said, but on rook d1, I'm just going to automatically push the pawn f6 or f5 and bring this up. Rook d7, mm, this might be a better shot at least. Something like this. Still losing for white, but at least they get one more pass pawn on the queen side. A4, I just took my time and played A5. Yeah, I took with a rook. Taking with a pawn, I'm sure, is okay too, but I just didn't want to give them a pass pawn. I saw no reason not to take with a rook. And it was a bit of a time scramble after this, but I don't think I was ever in any serious danger. Even when I eventually gave uh, the rook back for the knight plus pawn, I mean, at that point, I'm already up, what, like three pawns. So it's a, a winning ending. Yeah, like this moment, I'm up three pawns in this position. Check, check. I was surprised that um, he check. didn't go after the A pawn actually here. Like right here, he could have played rook over and taken that. These pawns are going to be uh, more than a bargain for white's lone A pawn, but yeah, as played, it's just check. It's too much. Check. Title wave check. of pawns. Check. Okay, so a pretty good game, I think. Um, you know, arguably, arguably, I was worse out of the opening, but got in a well-timed shot, and I'm satisfied with the way I played that game. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. Chalk a win up for the Scandi, always good. <laughs> and uh, have a good one, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'll be out with another video. Bye, guys.